Hello, welcome back. Today we're in London and we're doing an episode all about kebabs. There's more than one type of kebab in London. There's actually a whole variety of kebabs. So we thought we'd cover a few of these today. Currently we're in North London, we're in Dalston, and this is quite a kind of Turkish hotspot. So we're going to go into one of the kind of more traditional, classic what you think of kebab as, uh, at a place called Mangal. This is a Ojik Bashi restaurant, which means they have a open fire grill. This is a very traditional kind of Turkish kebab. This place does come very highly recommended. So if you're looking for a try, true tested place, this is a great choice. And it is a sit down restaurant. It's way more of a kind of dining experience than a classic kind of grab and go kebab wrap. All the food has arrived. I'm pretty sure I've already said this, but I feel like I'm eating a banquet. Like I think this is, it's a nice amount of stuff to just kind of like pick and choose that. And it's kind of like a... I think that just like brings an added enjoyment to it. It's not just like, oh, I've got one plate and I'm going to eat this. It's like, oh no, we have a bit of this and a bit of this. And then we've got a few different things. We've got essentially a Turkish pizza, which is minced lamb and tomato and herbs and spices on a nice kind of flatbread. Nice and crunchy, great flavor. Yeah, very thin crust, kind of like Roman style pizza. Yeah, now. that's really tasty. So these are like a filo, a filo pastry stuffed with uh, some feta cheese and some spinach inside. I find that these are really, really nice because it can be quite like a heavy meal. So you know, there's a lot of meat, a lot of grease going on. So a bit of feta cheese to kind of like cut through that. It's a nice thing. The Turkish spring roll. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, but it's got cheese in it. So yeah. it's, it's even better than the spring it's roll. Argument. Turkish mozzarella sticks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> <it's true. laughs> I've got. Uh, a chicken shish, I guess, is the, the classic term. Yeah. There was another name for it. But I can't, <laughs> I can't remember. remember what that word was, but it's essentially marinated, cubed, grilled chicken with um, some salad. I guess I got a very similar thing. I have the uh, the lamb pieces that we marinated, smaller kind of lamb pieces. So one of the things that I love about food, the iconic dishes are really simple dishes, and this is just like literally a piece of lamb that's been marinated and put on a grill, yeah. that's it. But there's so much variety, there's so much difference within that, but like this place does the classic so well. Yeah. It's so well marinated, there's so much flavor, expertly grilled, just enjoy it. I think it's just like a well-grilled piece of meat on open fire. It's yeah. just hard to beat. Yeah. That's, it's just a simple pleasure. So we've moved a bit further into town now. We're back in central London and Covent Garden. And we're visiting a place called Maison Bab. They're kind of redefining the kebab. And what they're doing is kind of elevating the kebab, putting a new spin, a modern spin, on what a kebab can be. And they have a 15-hour pork shawarma that I'm very excited to try. Also want to see how they're changing the game, what exactly they're changing about the kebab to make it more contemporary, to make it more modern. What is the twist about? I'm not sure. Okay, here we are, inside. I have to say, I have never been in a kebab place as fancy as this. I mean, could you even call this a kebab place anymore? I'm not sure, like... It's very bougie. Very bougie in here, very bougie. It's nice though, like it's a good atmosphere in here. Yeah. It's like, it seems like, just like a nice restaurant. Yeah, it is a nice restaurant, but I wouldn't say like, I, I would still say it's a kebab place because they do have a grill. They have okay. a grill and they've got meat grilling on the grill, so... Interestingly though, the the spit, the meat on the spit is actually sideways, mm. not vertically. So uh, I guess they're collecting all the dripping of the fat and they're, they're using that in some other areas of the cooking. For instance, like one of the starters we had, which was a uh, meat butter naan. Still got a little bit of that left over. Um, so that, that's like butter infused with the dripping from the, mm -hmm. the spit thing. Yeah, a very buttery, very delicious. Like, who doesn't love loads of butter on bread? That's what it is. It just delivers it 
in a very simple way. No bullshit, buttery, delicious bread. Love that. Okay, onto the mains. I got the, uh, the lamb shoulder, which came actually wrapped up for me already. Very yeah. handy that it came wrapped up. What about you, Jules? Did Mine, yours come wrapped up? Mine didn't come wrapped up. Yeah. I'm not sure why. So yeah, I got a... Uh, is it 12 hours or is it 15 hours? It was like 15 hours. Yeah, 15 hour pork. Uh, so it's been cooked for a very long time. It's got a lot of sauce on it as well. And uh, some vegetable garnish. And one of the interesting things about this place is that not only do they only use free range meat, but mm. they also make absolutely everything in house. So like all the pickled kind of vegetables and like okay, whatever right. you have, all of that's actually been prepared here as well, which I think is quite, yeah. quite a nice step. True commitment. This is really nice. It's a uh, really tender pork pieces, really nicely cooked, and uh, in a very kind of, it's almost yogurt tea tasting mayonnaise kind of fresh sauce, mm -hmm. and uh, the occasional kind of cut through from a pickled kind of cabbage type thing. It's just a good flavor. So I got the um, the lamb shoulder kind of kebab wrap, I guess. Um, I'd have to say, whilst it looks like a normal dono, the taste is phenomenal. The lamb has really well rendered fat in it. I get the sense that this has been cooked very low and slow for a long time. The fat really melts away in your mouth. But maybe the star of the show though, is this yogurt sauce they got inside, because it's really sharp and tangy and it counteracts the fattiness of the lamb really well. So just like a, a, a nice contrast of flavors that somehow is in balance with each other. Yeah. So like, clearly I, somebody's thought about this. Yeah, I think that's like the one thing. When I said nothing's overwhelming, what I really mean is it's really balanced. Hmm. Like yeah. not that it's not good, it's just like yeah. everything is harmonious. Yeah, I wouldn't call this bland. I think this isn't very bland at all. No, this no, is no. quite like a, an exciting mouthful of food. But uh, like I said, it's really strange because these are very similar flavors that I'm used to, kind of like, you know, in a cheaper takeaway kebab place. But in this setting and the way it's done, it is kind of a, it's weird to have it in this in this way. This is the difference between me and George. <laughs> Look at this chili sauce application. I'm <laughs> just literally smothered. Meanwhile, George's very, very dainty little toe is in the corner. I'd say like it's a similar, if you spread this out, similar. it's a similar amount. But yeah, you have gone for a full layer. No. <laughs> Okay, we are at our final location, just off Edgware Road, an area that's got a lot of Middle Eastern food, a lot of Middle Eastern influence around here. We are at a final kebab destination, the potentially, I'm gonna mispronounce this, Pato, Patog, P-A-T-O-G-H. You Iranians out there, tell me, because this is an Iranian restaurant. So we've diverged. We're no longer only exhibiting the Turkish kebab. There's all kinds of kebabs in London and uh, Really, it's just variations of grilled meat. So uh, I'm interested to see what they do differently, what the differences maybe in the spices or just the menu in general are. I'm pretty full, but still excited to see. Food has arrived. And amazingly, most impressive thing, not the meat, but this giant bread. Look at it. It's huge. It's literally bigger than my head. And my head is very big, so there I'm were, impressed. There were actually two different breads on the menu. There was normal bread, and there was special bread. You could, do you know which one this is? Yeah. I think it's quite it's pretty obvious. obvious. <laughs> and then I went for the minced lamb kebab. Um, great normal option, you know, your standard minced lamb kebab. but. Also some nice special saffron rice makes this place Iranian, not Turkish. That, that's how you can kind of tell straight away. I actually got essentially the same dish as Mangal, the first place we went to, which is a chicken sheesh. So I'm expecting here to more so like compare the kind of herbs and spices as opposed to like, they're both going to be cooked in a similar manner, you know? Yeah. Like the differences will be in like the actual kind of tastes of the cuisines. The chicken has some great color. Mm. It's got some good like, crunch, it looks. The grill skills of the gentleman grilling, excellent. You can tell he's grilled many, many a grilled stuff. This bread though, it's so giant, it's actually difficult to tear it without causing a scene in the restaurant. Damn. 
This is Tasty. a good bread. Yeah. Oh wow. This is a really good bread. Uh, what I also like about this, like the giant bread, like you could have had a small bread with your, that was one of the options. Yeah. Have rice or bread or something. Mm -hmm. I like the communal aspect of the giant bread. That's fresh. true. I like so that too. It's like bringing people together, yeah. the sharing aspect. The sharing aspect. Is Not really a bigger, the biggest fan of a minced lamb kebab, but I thought I'd try it here and it has been like seasoned very well as well. Because sometimes what I don't like is for a minced lamb kebab to be very bland, you know, there's no flavor there. But this one, it's got the lamb flavor as well as a bit of heat in it. This is more of an adventurous type of mince here. Mm. The bread, start the show, real win. We've come to the end of our very meaty journey. We are in Hyde Park, a fitting place to finish off such a calorific experience. So I feel like we need to do a couple of laps of Hyde Park to burn it all off. It was a lot of food. But I felt good about it. It was good food. Like yeah. everything was enjoyable that we ate today. I think it would be hard to like pick something that's like an obvious best meal. To me, because kebabs are such a simple thing, it's meat on a grill with some simple sides. Everybody has their own interpretation of it. You know, yeah. every single country has an interpretation of it. And, and it's hard to say this is objectively better than the other one. For me personally, I still think I prefer a traditional kind of Turkish sit down restaurant like Mangal. But it's good to know that there are places like Maison Bab who are looking to reinterpret things, modernize things, maybe progress the conversation. Yeah, I think we also barely scratched the surface. There's so many other cuisines which also offer grilled meat. There's a lot more to explore, um, which is exciting. It's, it's nice to know there's so much out there. So if you come to London, let us know if you go to any of these spots or if there are any other undiscovered spots that we don't know about. Give us a shout out down below. Let us know what the good recommendations are. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and... Don't forget to buy the merch. All right, see you in the next one, guys. Bye.